This conference will now be recorded. Hi, a very warm welcome to Ivan MQ, the demonstration session. So in this session, we're just going to discuss about the basic introduction of Ivan MQ and we are going to learn about what's Ivan MQ. So this is just a demonstration session and we are not going to touch any kind of technical related things. So no talks, let's start. First of all, let me introduction, let me give introduction about myself. My name is Mohan Krishna and I'm a senior consultant and trainer for IBM MQ, IAB and Kafka system administration. But in this session, we are going to concentrate on only IBM MQ. We are not going to touch IBM IAB and then we are not going to touch Kafka system administration. So till now I have given the trainings for DRDO, which is Defense Research and Development Organization in Delhi, BlackRock India Software Private Limited, Atos India Private Limited, Merck Logistics, Cognizant, Fidelity Investments. So uh, these are my very good experience in my trainings where I have delivered the corporate trainings. And coming to my professional experience, I have a uh, total uh, seven plus years of experience in IBM MQ and IAB system administration. And in my career, I have worked for investment projects, banking projects and retail projects. So these projects has really given me a very, very insight hands on for IBM MQ administration. Now let's come to IBM MQ. So before IBM MQ, there are certain challenges in the IT industry, they are so there are lack of lacks of business applications in information technology. So lacks in since millions of applications in the information technology. So these millions of applications need to communicate each other to fulfill the business requirements. So before IBM MQ uh, to maintain the communication among the application, it's not a joke. It's really, really tough, really, really challenge. So to overcome this challenge, IBM MQ came up with a solution and they named the solution as MQ. So the purpose of MQ is to maintain the communication among the applications. That is the only purpose of IBM MQ. So let's start some history of IBM MQ. So MQ stands for Mrs. Queen and which is introduced by IBM Corporation in 1992. So after that, they launched several versions of MQ. So let's see all the versions now. So they launched with 5.0 in the year 1997, then 6.0, then 7.0, followed by 7.1, again followed by 7.5. But the thing is, okay, then 8.0, then 9.0. But the thing is still 7.5, all these versions are out of support. It means these are, they are uh, not supported by, by IBM MQ. Only 8.0 and 9.0 are the latest available versions. Even 8.0 is going to out of support after April 2020. So after April 2020, only 9.0 is there. So MQ is a part of middleware technology and MQ is specially designed to communicate the applications among them just over the network. So that's all. Over the network application can interact with each other in a smooth way with the help of IBM. That is the only purpose of MQ. Okay. So here it is. So till 7.5, uh, uh, they, they all they are outdated versions. Now what's IBM MQ? So MQ stands for message queuing. An application can exchange the information in the form of messages that's why mq is called messaging service here i'm taking a sample scenario so i'm considering two banks icsa bank and hdfc bank these two are very very famous banks in india that's why i'm taking these two banks so i'm taking a money transfer scenario between two different banks so let's see how it works for example i have a customer who uses icsa net banking application and there is a customer from HDFC, he has to use HDFC net banking application for his banking services. So the requirement is ICIC person, the, the customer of ICIC, he has to send some money, say uh, thousand bucks. He has to transfer thousand bucks to 
uh, HDFC customer. So generally how it happens? So I say say customer, he will enter some details, right? HDFC customer, bank account number, IFCS code, how much money he has to transfer. So some kind of information he will transfer, he will enter. So based on this information, the money will be debited from IC, from his ICSA bank and it will travel and it is going to be credited to the HDFC banking application. So this is a general scenario for the money transfer between two different banks, right? So for these kind of situations, IBM MQ is going to a best suit thing. The thing is, these applications, ICIC and HDFC need to communicate each other over the network. Right. So if there are two applications which has to exchange the information over the network. So for this kind of scenario, I'm sure MQ is going to best suit for an application. Okay. Now the question is why IBM MQ is the best option for the application communication. The answer is very simple. The advantage is provided by IBM MQ. So first of all, IBM MQ is an asynchronous communication. So now what is meant by asynchronous communication? The application need not to be available at all the time. So for example, we have seen uh, the previous uh, scenario, right? I, money transfer between two banks. Okay, let me go back there. Okay, so here I say say net banking application, he has to send some money to HDFC customer. So consider the situation is like this. HDFC application is down due to some issue. We don't know the reason. It is down. Application is not able to work. It is not able to, it is not in a position to take any kind of messages, any kind of transactions. Right? When HDFC is down, I say say customer is not aware that HDFC is down. Now he initiated money transfer. Now money has been debited from his account. Now it is transferred over the network and is trying to reach HDFC application but HDFC is down. It is not in a position to accept the transaction. Now what happens? As these are communicate, these are connected via MQ, these are transporting the message via MQ, the message is going to store in IBM MQ. Whenever an application is up, so this application will connect to MQ and it will consume the messages. This is how the application is going to communicate in IBM MQ. So MQ is purely asynchronous communication and asynchronous in a sense, the application need not to be available at all the time. Although your application is down, that's fine. Your message will be safely transported to the destination. The second thing is platform independent. IBM MQ is a platform independent, like it can work, it can support on all the kind of operating systems, like Windows, AX, Linux, HP Linux, Mainframe, AS400, Sun Solaris, whatever it is. Now, security. So, IBM MQ has the capability for a safe and secure transport of messages. So, for example, in the if you remember that banking slide, it's a banking and it deals with the money. So, money is very, very sensitive matter, right? So, having a security, it matters a lot, especially in the financial domains. So MQ has the capability for a safer transport of your money over the network. So how security can be provided to the message? Yes, we have another session called security session. So in this session, we are going to understand how security can be implemented. So MQ has the capability of transfer the message securely and this can be achieved by various algorithms. And what are those algorithms? Yes, we're going to discuss in our security concept and assurance. Assurance in the sense MQ can provide 100% guarantee of that particular message delivery. It means if any source application initiated a message transmission, for sure it is going to deliver. It is not going to loss. And accuracy. So accuracy in the sense MQ has a capability that it can accurately deliver to the particular destination. It is not going to miss the destination. So MQ has a kind of capability. How that capability is going to achieve? Yes, we are going to see in our future classes. So how a message queuing works? It's very simple. So programs can communicate by putting the message on queues. For example, if you see this diagram here, program A is connected to some MQ and from the same MQ program B is 
connected. So here program, the thing is program A needs to send a message to program B. So what program A does is, and consider program A, program B, these two are using a technology called IBM EQ for successful transport of the messages between them. So what program A does is it will connect to MQ and put the message in MQ. So your message will keep on piling up in MQ. And program B, it is a, it will also connect to the same MQ and it will consume the messages so that at the end of the day, the message will be successfully transported from A to B. And if B is down, that's fine. Your message is still going to safer on MQ side because MQ is asynchronous. It's an asynchronous communication. So generally, this is how the messaging service works in IBM MQ. Okay, till now we are discussing uh, application will exchange information in the form of messages, right? So let's discuss what is the message now. So if you see this rectangle is a message, this entire rectangle is a message, it is having two things, message header and message data. Let's see now what is a message header and what is a user data. So a message header contains which application is sending the message, which application is receiving the message, at what time the message is generated, what is the particular message ID, and what is the pre of that particular message, and what is the expiry of that particular message. So it deals about the message details. Okay, and come to the message data. So it is the actual data of the message. So for example, uh, if you remember that a banking example scenario, money transfer scenario between two banks, so which bank is sending the data to which bank it is going and how it is going, what is the expiry? All this comes to message data and how much money is transporting from these two banks that is come to actual data. So being MQ admin, our focus should be only on header. We should not focus on actual message data because we don't need the actual data is needed by the application people, not by the MQ admins. The role of MQ admin is he has to take care whether the money, I mean, whether the message is successfully transported or not. If it is transported, yes, I am done. My job is done. That's all. That is the only job of IBM MQ admin. So how much money is transported that is taken care by the application people because it's their application. They are using, they are the business owners. Now they have to decide. All right. So message data is the actual thing that is generated by the application. Now let's see types of messages. So we have various types of messages in MQ. So the first type we have persistent message and then non-persistent message. So let's see what is a persistent message. If MQ fails or restart, then your message will remain in MQ. So for example, my messages are in MQ, but all of a sudden due to some issue, my MQ server got rebooted. That's fine. If it is a persistent message, yes, your message is going to be safer inside the MQ. But if it is a non persistent message, no, MQ will never give you a guarantee that your message will still on the queue because it's a non persistent. Non persistent means if MQ got rebooted, that's all, your message is going to be vanished. There is no guarantee that MQ can record that message. So whenever you are designing the application, whenever we are designing, in the architecture, first of all, we need to decide whether it has to be a persistent message or it has to be a non-persistent message. Based on that, you had to design the architecture. Now, let's see this PPT. So this PPT, this diagram which you are seeing right now, this is not prepared by me. This is prepared by IBM. So in the year 2017, IBM MQ Summit has happened in India. So in that summit, IBM has launch this PPT. So if you see this, in the 48 hours without a water, human being, can he survive? No, right? In the same 48 hours, IBM MQ provides 16 million travelers, travelers with their accurate flight information. So in the travel industry, IBM MQ plays a vital role. And in six, six minutes without a heartbeat, pretty much sure, human can survive. In the same six minutes, I will increase 60,000 of customers in stores on 
online. It means in the retail industry, you could guess the importance of 5 MMQ. And three minutes without oxygen, definitely we are not going to survive. In the same three minutes, IBM MQ transfers 4 billion transactions in the bank or across the world. See, IBM MQ, how important it has, how sensitive it is. Right? Hope you understand what is MQ and what is the purpose of MQ. And also hope you understand the criticality of IBM MQ in the industry. So this is about the basic introduction. So we'll meet in the next session. Have a good day. Bye.